Yeah. What do you see? This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. I cannot believe it's been almost two years since I first came here to England, to the UK, to visit Mr. Paul at AAC. Okay, we're getting back on the tube this time. Where are we going, Lizard Lady? Chancery Lane. Let's go. Tube. We're off to see a wanker. The wonderful <laughs> wanker named Paul. Where is he? I, I spot a bald man. I think that's our Uber. The Latin Biz, Biz Bush Latin Bush Business Center. What does that mean? Who's Latin and who's Bush? Well, well, we don't really know. I can't believe we're here for the third time. Hello, Essex Coral Farm. Get out of this English rain. What are you buying? What? Still in the donut. Hold on, let me see. What is this? Red Sea. Re oh, never mind. It's not a reef casa. Three times a charm. Oh my goodness. I think I want to do something a little bit different in this video. I always talk. I think I want to let Paul do a lot of the talking. Maybe you guys, after two years, are tired of hearing my voice, my commentary, seeing everything through my eyes. Maybe we'll let Lizard Lady talk instead. She can give us only hers. But I think we're going to do it. We'll change it up a little bit in this video. Paul's going to give us his commentary. I really, really love about this shop is the display tanks. Um, they're just so inviting and they're so old school they're so classic when you walk in look at the first three that we're gonna see here this one this one and this one with that white light you know it's not that strong blue windexy sort of look and it's dominated by soft corals all the nephthias leathers we have beautiful christmas tree worm rock here at the bottom just like oh what an example look at this thing it's like if you would type it into google christmas tree worm rock that's what you want to see that kind of photo with the blue orange, yellow, beautiful Durasa clam. It's very appealing to me. I really, really like the white light because you just need it in order to truly appreciate how nice some of these soft corals are. If you put this under strong blue light, all of these are just gonna get completely washed out. What I mean is they're just gonna get lost completely in the blue. And same thing over here. Oh my God, look at this tank. We're not going. We call her. We call her Lizard Lady because she's into tegus and snakes and everything that is cold-blooded. This is why we give her the name Lizard Lady. Paul, walk me through this tank. What is going on in here? Do you remember when we went away to Nuremberg? Yes. And we saw that tank with lots of MPS corals in it. Yes. It, oh, I loved it. And uh, when I came back, I thought I'll have a little go at that. So this is a sales tank, so we do sell from it. I've never so it's not seen necessarily like a permanent display. They're tunicates, gold bringing tunicates. I've never seen those. Yeah, these are chameleon gauls. Have you started to see these abroad? No. They, they, when they open, they are just stunning. They're little rainbow colours. Uh, blue sponge, that's partially photosynthetic, so not quite MPS. How do you... How do you get that? You import that? Yeah, they they, they come off uh, barley uh, mariculture. I love what you've done uh, here. Some Caribbean tree sponges, neo spongy oides, uh, and then there's a few sort of non photosynthetic golds. But we absolutely pelt this with food every day. Reef nutrition, oyster feast, um, a little bit of Benny Pets, and a little bit of Reef Roids. So but we're using a really low wattage light, so we don't grow algae because of all the food and all the pollution. Oh, that's smart. Keep, yeah, just keeping the lighting really low. And what light is this? Uh, that's an aquarelle, which is a Polish light. Okay. Yeah. But it's on the budget end of the market, only sort of 200 odd pounds, so it's not a fortune. But it's doing the job. But it's the app is really simple to use, it, it works every time. This is a new tank, Neptunian Q. See Whoa, them? No, yeah. this is tripping me out with this floating, yeah, so, floating well, edge. Well, let me show you this. So this tank, what makes it really interesting is the wafer fin weir. Oh, yeah. But there are some sort of design flaws, I feel, with it, but it depends on the animals that you put in it. Okay. Oh, because the actual, like this. because this comes down here much and then goes under the base, and the fittings are under the base here. 
So this is a full space that's below. Oh, what if yeah. something gets stuck in there? Well, there is that problem, isn't there? That's why I said there are some sort of things. But nice sum. That is sexy. Yeah, not bad, is it? I'll put a reef octo in it to match the colours of the sum. Yeah. Um, really strong cabinet. Comes with the panels attached to the timber. Wow. Um, so it's, uh, it's uh, there are, as I said, generally I'm quite happy with it. There are some one or two things I would change, but I dig it. It is different. That's why we got it in the shop. Was this two years ago not a bird's nest dominated yes. aquifer yeah. tank? So now it's all soft corals. I changed that just when the energy crisis, when the energy crisis started. I thought, how can we build a tank that doesn't really cost a lot of money to look after? Okay. So rather than having to dose this, this just has a water change every couple of weeks. What are these? They, those are what these clowns or the yeah they are bandit storms oh. they're the first bandits meaning that they've got the black mask i've never seen them my, my friend read those from um boston cm reef a brood stock and it thinks that this is a an enemy. yeah he uses the uh, pussy coral as a um, uh, as a, uh, an enemy. Type. Pussy coral, huh? I've never heard that one. We usually call this cold coral. Yeah, cold coral is another name for in the UK. We call it pussy coral as well. And it looks like you've taken out the substrate? Uh, we never had any substrate in there. I raised it this morning. But um, we keep it really clean because I want the most velocity of water. The turnover in here is immense. What's this? Uh, Halmidia. Halmidia. Which is a type of macro algae. Uh, semi semi toxic. Um, and what forms most of, see the white where it's dying back a bit there, that's what forms as calcium carbonate and the sand that you see around in the Caribbean region, for hmm. example. That, that and coral rock, but yeah, so it forms in the sand. This is just a fantastic, fantastic thing. I love it, and it's so easy. Lots of flow. So it's set up like an SPS aquarium, same amount of flow, but where the cost saving is, is we're not having to dose it. Hmm. Um, so two Nero 5 in the back. Um, a reef wave 45 and then a tons wave box which is what's giving it that rhythm love it yeah. I'm still using the reef LED yeah. 90s and I, I think the soft holes that wear particularly they're fantastic because they give that metal halo look so what we lose in colour will gain in shimmer um, but yeah I, I love it this tank costs us the least and it looks, and it looks great yeah no phosphate control and do you you're not worried about any sort of warfare between like the leather and, yeah, and these we'll ones trim it off and then and that's what makes them productive and then we get asked for frags of the waving hand all the time mm -hmm. there's a lot of people moving away from stonies you know, and the, the nice thing is that that's one of your favourites, actually. Yeah. The cingularia at the top there. Yeah, that's the polyps. And if I touch it, you so fuzzy. just focus on the, the coral there. Yeah. When you just touch one bit, watch what happens to the rest. And then it all oh, goes oh, in. That See is that? so cool. Yeah. All at the all at the same time. This is really a tank where if you want to travel or leave, you can bugger off for a week and come back and not have Absolutely. to worry. Well, that was the whole point. I wanted a tank that didn't cost the earth, yeah, and um, it's productive. You wanted the opposite of this. Tank. Opposite of that, which cost the earth. This cost the earth. Yeah. This cost maybe the moon. Yeah. What is new with this one? I'm always. New. We could um, do just I think a, the, the, the newest thing about this is is that I've just completed four months no room to change using the what? range sediments. Hold on, can we get that on camera one more time? How many months, no water change? Uh, not that I'm an advocator of no water changes, but we are, I'm trying an experiment. It's four months, no water change now. How come? Um, I got really busy through Christmas and realized I was, I was traveling as well and never got round to it. And then all of a sudden I started realizing it was really settling well. This is running on the reef sediments. So we're ICP in it and making minor changes, but we're trying to avoid at the moment any water changes on it, just to see how it does. It looks like whatever you're doing is working. Looks remarkable. Still, still haven't managed to cut, cut it down a bit. Needs a bit of pruning. How deep is this thing? Uh, 27 inches, I think it is. Wow. It's just the, it's the ice. So How tall are you? 6'2". So the reason why I did is, is that most aquarium cabinets, they come about this high, so 27 would look here, which doesn't really give it much of a uh, nice look. So I had the cabinet, an extra few inches put on the cabinet to lift it up so that in store, 
you know you it, feel like you're in the ocean exactly so it's so it's not too deep so it's not a pain in the ass to work on i don't know it looks yeah. it looks pretty deep to me but i'm also 510 so yeah. i think the biggest thing is this front to back front to back is 95 centimeters so it's, it's got a nice depth to it. Do you have any trick to getting this branching Cyphastria to grow? Because I have a piece for three years that does nothing. Uh, there is. Uh, me and Dan are the same in the farm. We've got mother colonies that never seem to grow very fast at all. And then sometimes it just takes off. It must be elemental. I think there's something missing. elemental. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have a favorite piece in this tank? Like when you come in the morning, is your eye drawn to well, one? Well, the, the favourite thing for me in this tank is the black tank, which is now uh, uh, approaching 20 years old. Wow. Um, which was gifted back to me. I originally sold it as a uh, as a small specimen to a customer who sadly passed away, but that was left in his will to me. So. Um, I think a lot of people forget sometimes how long these fish can live. There's my lovely little pipe fish there, and the world's biggest black cat grammar. Oh my god. Yeah. So big you could make like fish and chips out of him. Yeah. Look, look at the size of that thing. You really like your clams too. Beautiful uh, Durasa. Yes, too. It's Durasas and it's a Dosa. Um, Hiposis. Durasa, not Durasa. Hiposis. You're probably right, I'm probably wrong. I like the clams that you can put in the sand. Like yeah. these, yeah. What a nice specimen. That's quite a special coral over there, the Goniastria. It's a red and green mold. You don't see too many of those, the red and green mold. There's just, there's not even a square inch left. It's just coral no, it, coral. it, it does, he's getting a bit, like, I'm looking at it these days and thinking, what am I gonna do next? Nothing, enjoy it. Look, even yeah. just like in between the chows, look at that little Christmas tree worm rock yeah. sticking out there. You know, even if this, you might think his rock is actually some cactus or orange pavona. Yeah. Every square inch. How old's the tank? Uh, eight years. Wow. Yeah, eight years now. Look at this. This is like, if somebody comes in, and sees this. This is, I always say, your, your main display. It's kind of like your resume. Yeah. You know, you can judge a store sort of by their, you know, they can talk all day about keeping and theory and all that, but really, this is this is the proof. That's why we do it, really to give, I'll tell you the main reason why we do displays as well. Obviously, is one is, is it gives us another place to which we can sort of frag from and grow from. Mm -hmm. But the main reason is to give consumers the confidence about our water that we sell. You know, there's a lot of LFS dug out for having inferior water right. in the UK anyway. But um, I like to give customers, well, if it's good enough for us, it's good enough for everyone. But I mean, it's not without fault, this tank. I can always find plenty of faults with it. You know, there's a nice Aptasia riding right in the branches of that bloody Monty Poro. Monster like, one. Yeah. So How are you even going to reach that? Well, I did used to have an army of peppermint shrimp until the Racetamol, yeah? Um, so I'll probably have to just reach in there and try. I putted it out a few times and I've actually injected it a few times, but it's still there. I think Aptasia is just something you live with. But if you leave in. them alone when they're like that, they're not going to cause too many problems. But when you, uh, I putty them out, Jeremy's mob, when it's in a situation like that. And you like the radiance, that looks like eight of the XR. 10, 10, oh, sorry. 10, 10 XR15, they're G5. They're not actually G6. G5 is actually my favorite color rendition that they made. I like the G5 more than yeah, the 6. I, I love them, but I still prefer the G4. I still think G4, that, I still yeah. prefer the G4. That's what yeah. we're running on the entire store, actually. Yeah, yeah. Another one of those beautiful clowns. What's going on? Any changes behind on the sump? I know we've looked well, at it in other videos. Only really Zelements. Zelements, the dosing Show me. So originally, it was calcium reactor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but now Behind the scenes. Nowadays, we are using a product range um, which I don't suppose has made it across the wall yet, but we're using this product range. No, I've never heard of this. It's, called, it? it's oh. called PH Plus. It's made it's here? A, yeah, PH Plus, and it's a two-part solution. And since I've started using this, and I see in it, that's when I ceased water changes. And what do you use for ICP, which brand? Uh, Reef Elements again. Oh, they have their own Yeah, they have their own ICP machine as well. I suppose the other thing is we've got the Reef Factory Smart Tester on it for phosphate, which has been fairly reliable. There's been a few times where I've had to recalibrate it. Um, Joe, my other son, built me a nice, uh, built me a nice, um, what is it? it's a Trident. 
No, it's not. It's a trident. It's not nice to lie to friends. Oh, it just changed color. Just, yeah, just How is that a trident? I'm uh, used to seeing it as a, an iron. Yeah, well, now we see Joe and I have come up with the idea. Well, it actually, he's, I think you can get this as a 3D print file have in the US. Have you sent this to Neptune? Uh, no, we've sort of not told them. Hey, Neptune. <laughs> they've, Don't tell them. They've done a much better job of your, your silly design trident. Yeah, yeah I know. And that's that actually, what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, shh. Don't tell them. Okay, we'll yeah. cut this part out of the video. <laughs> no, yeah, so no, 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 not much changes at all, really. Look at this, all the electrical, everything, everything up off the floor. Have a mate, the Grumpy Reefer. Hi, Grumpy Reefer. Hello. <laughs> You're being watched by about 5,000 oh, other UKers. Uh, we'll give you a handshake on camera. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, man. Why do they call you Grumpy Reefer? Because uh, I always look grumpy. You do. You know what? The, the, the name is suiting. I just rest in bitch face. As they call it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Lady, what do you see? This little fish with a pointy nose. Oh, hold on. This is a good thumbnail. Hot girl in front of tank. One second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me snap a photo of that. There's the thumbnail. Hold on. So there's another one up there. There's the mouth. Oh. Yeah. I'll chuck some food in. We'll rev it up. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah. This is gorgeous. I'm, no word of a lie. This is one of the nicest display tanks I've, I've seen anywhere. It's yeah, maintained by a master. The guys with the hats. A little urchin, great at eating algae. So cool to see stuff like this, you know, on the other side of the world and connect with people that are obviously so passionate about it in the business. You know, so many. Oh, what are we feeding? Um, that's just a mega free brine, that one. And how often do you feed this tank? Uh, about five, six times a day. Five, six times? Yeah. A day? Yeah. Wow. Five, six wow. times a day. I don't know how many times I can say that. Oh, look at that guy. Look at that. He's a bendy rat. Is that why he's like, oh. Yeah, he sort of bent himself. When he was a kid, he must have. We've just made a short walk over from AAC over to this hall in this other building. They're gonna be hosting on May 18th, Love to Reef, what do you call it? A coral swap, a coral meet, coral yeah, expo. It's a coral, it's a coral thing where there's- Everything to do with corals. Yeah, you can, you can buy corals, there'll be industry experts there, we've got 14 different vendors. Basically, if you have a saltwater tank, this is where you wanna be, May 18th. It's just a, not even 20 second walk from Advanced Aquarium Consultancy across the way, 14 different vendors. Everyone's going to be set up here, so do not miss it. I said the date 10 times. I'll say it once more. May 18th, 2024. Check it out. This is Love to Reef. Let's give him a call. <laughs> this is my number one UK fam who fails to come to the store. You know how long it takes me to get here? i got to take a flight. We won't put his number online. But... No. <laughs> if you are March's number one UK fan, how on earth are you all the way down south? Why are you not here? What, what's going on? Space for the farm. This is the Reef Cost <laughs> Distribution Center, oh, as I keep yet. calling it. <laughs> if you guys um, are ever looking for it, any of the Reef Costa products, you can find them here. Paul's got them all in stock tanks, lids, filtration covers, frag tanks, frag racks, pumps, bacteria blocks, all of it. So, this space is going to be this space another going farm. To, well, it's going to be we're basically for our online coral sale. So, the table's being pushed back, and then we're going to have three because that's just temporary. That one is from some of my seals. To take there. photos for yeah, online? Yeah, so that we don't, with the store, the problem is with the store is we can't go online because we see that much, that many customers that yes. at any moment we could have sold a coral. That's what happens to us. Yeah, so the idea being we'll put it behind the scenes. Um, but what if a customer sees something online? They can order it and, and then, then they come can over collect here and it from store. Okay, yeah. yeah. So we're going to have a coral system there. Angela's having a new packing area. That will be a reef nutrition wholesale area that so we're building. So what you're saying is all the corals that you have in that store are at least a good portion of them. Eventually, they're going to be available to be purchased online and shipped across the UK. Yes. Finally. Yeah. So you're coming into the 20th century. <laughs> well. <laughs> There'll be different corals, so the so the corals that'll be in the store remain in store, but there'll be also corals that you'll see online. It's like as a well. hybrid two in one sort of. Absolutely, yeah. First, you got to come see us and yeah. see how we do it. Yes, and then over here we're going to be building the seahorse rearing system from home. So you know, remember I said to you about yeah. it's going to be moving. The one that's in your shed. Yes. So we're going to be changing. We just had all the electrics moved up. We've just had aircon fitted. We just had all the ducting done. Nice, nice. The nice. floor has all been waterproof, so that if ever there's a problem. Uh, it had to be a specialised paint because there was parquet under it. Um, but so this is going to be cool. Yeah, so a new, new, new part to AAC, hopefully 
towards the end of this year, I would. Farm. Let's go see the farm. This is the song that we sing when we are going to see the farm. Let's go. It's not quite Dion though in terms of fighter planes. No, our rigorous okay. biosecurity. You want to come and see the rigorous? <laughs> we do the best we can. We make the lemonade with the lemons we have. Let's see what is going on in the on in. labyrinth farm. I can't believe this is third time I'm here. Okay, third time I'm here. Paul's going to come over actually and visit us for the first time. End of July, early August, and then I think I've said it many times on the channel. Danny from Danny's Aquarium is coming. We're going to jump in the car with Patrick from Reef Wholesale, and we're going to go check out Tidal Gardens. But that is going to come later in the summer. Okay, what's new? What is going um, on? There's not a great deal new. We've been experimenting, growing a little bit of fighter plants, and Dan's only practicing at the moment. We're growing all our own Artemia nowadays, our brine shrimp and all that for feeding the seahorses at home. Oh, wow. But we're just practicing, so it's not quite young, when, is it? Um, but we're just having a little play. Daniel's just getting the ready. So, in there. so you know next door, that will be part of next door as well, is the aquaculture side. So aquaculture corals, aquaculture seahorses, mm -hmm. and a little bit of wholesale reef nutrition, reef casting, obviously. But at the moment, Dan's going through his experimental phase. Is this the salt you're using back here? Red sea. Uh, yeah, Red Sea or uh, DD sometimes we use, which is a similar salt to some of the Red Sea ones, that one, which we quite like. Do you have a, per, uh, like a preferred one, a favorite one? I just like anything that's close to natural seawater. It's not it. too elevated. You, yeah. know? you heard it here. Yeah. So Dan's just where he's culturing a few pieces. This is the forest fire that I'm always drawn to. I don't know why, but if there's one I could take back, I want this forest fire. That's yeah, quite. those are my old mothers. They're getting a little bit tired now. A little bit. I've got my new mothers over there that are very productive. How much of the coral in the front there would you say you're, like on the retail end, that you're growing? That, and how much is being brought in? About 30%. Grown? Yeah. So Dan, so you can see he's getting ready again. He's doing some frags and things of like uh, the uh, cyclostrias and what, what is this? You. This is a monty. Which one? It's an orange one. Yeah, that's a yeah. You've got like yeah, a beach monty. bunny monty. No, this is not. This is not beach bum. This is something else. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, not under quite. the right lighting conditions, this I think is, I could turn that into beach bum. I yeah. think this is nicer. Yeah. This is this is that's got a, a beautiful nice one. Orange. That's gold rush monty pora. I don't know if you've seen that one before. No, a no. silver polyx on a sort of uh, rainbowy, orangey background. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. These corals are really close, like up yeah. against one another. Yeah. Overdue for a fragging, huh? Yeah. So then Dan will start to frag them down as they grow out. Does Dan do all the fragging here? Mostly now. I used to do it. I wish I still did it. I just get too busy, wrapped up a lot of things. So Dan is, Dan is sort of doing it. He's 99% really Dan now. It's a really special afro there. Look, look, All of these, look at the amount of flow he's getting on these. If you ever wondered if you're giving your acros too much flow, look at the polyps on this millipore. Oh wow. That's sort of like um, Latistella, but we call it sexy beast. Sexy. Wow. You animal. Yeah. And there's some new stuff in there, but there's also um, some old school bits. So, for example, over there, barley slimer. How do you keep these pieces from flying off the plug with this much current? They're heavy plugs. Okay. Most of them are heavy ceramic. Normal plugs at the front here, but they're all heavy ceramics though, so they don't, you can pelt them with plug. And you weren't kidding when you said that the Radeon Gen 4 Pro was your still your favorite light. Yeah, Gen 4. Yeah. Which uh, looks like an aquatic light T5 hybrid fixture, mm. giving some supplement on the side. And that's it. Pretty simple, but... Yeah. The coloration is just bang on these pinks, the blues, which for me is one of the hardest colors I think to get on acro. Polyp extension is out of this world. This is like, I remember diving in Indonesia when we went to go see them in the wild. This is how they look. But the current, it's just crazy. And what are you using for float? A pair of MP40s? We've no. got MP40s, reef octos. Uh, there were lots of gyros on there, but uh, the you don't like the gyros? No, we do, but they just kept fading because we had so many snails crawling in. There's such a pain in the ass to service and fix, yeah. huh? Like yeah. they're good when they're good. Mm. These are perhaps some of the more special pros. Oh my god! Look at these colors. This is just 
Right. So acros for days. Yeah. There's a few other species in here, but it's mainly uh, acros. When they get encrusted like this, just fully encrusted, they're over the plug, is this ready for sale or is well, this something you're trying to culture? Well, so you're trying a to culture both. a bit of both. So, for example, uh, it, it may well be that we'll hang on to it because we frag from our frags because we don't have the room. Okay. You know, if we had Chris Meckley's acres that he's got, we could allow them to grow out. But, of course, we have to do everything on the small in the UK right. because of the ground rent pricing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have to pack a lot in in order to do it. There's our famous AAC sour berry, which is very, I think very similar to the um, PC rainbow that you might know of. Yeah. Um, and there's some nice rainbow tenuous red culture in there. There's a big piece of your favourite there, the Cypherstria yeah, uh, decardia. I love that piece. Oh, that's nice a bit down here. Yeah, have a look at it. This, is this one's funky though. This one's yeah, got sort of green base, color. red polyp. Yeah, and this is what I'm used to with the kind of purple reddish hue. Yeah, and yeah, on this tank, some, some Hydra 64, maybe even 52 HDs. No, these uh, 60, 64s on there. So there's on our sort of dumping ground, our rock pool area. Oh. That's got an old school Hydra on it. I love that his dumping yeah. ground. Well, these uh, my dream. Well, we use the fox corals. There's space for the fox coral to culture down there as well. It's just where we might take Nick frags from, really. Dumping ground, look at this rubbish, this Indonesian rubbish torch, look at that. And this is his dumping ground. Well, if something's not quite well, if something's not good in know that no video is complete without a battery dying at least once, so we got that out of the way. Okay, what I wanted to ask you, why, 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 why are you still using T5s over Acropora? Eh. I think that's just where this was built around about six years ago. When I go on to build the new unit, I probably won't put T5s in it, to be if honest. If electricity was as inexpensive as it is in Ohio, if you're watching, hello, Tidal Gardens, what up then? Um, if it, would, let's say, was near free levels, would you still be running T5? Probably, yeah. Probably, okay, how come? I, mean, I just, I like the wraparound light. Right. So that's the thing, it wraps around so there's a lot less shading with it, yeah. The I acros mean, look healthier. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think probably my best results were when I was using T5, but yeah. that doesn't mean that I feel that LED can't do it. You know, there's no, there's no uh, encouragement for me to say that because I only sell LEDs anymore. Um, but, you know, I think that you can do it, you know, with LED. Um, no problem at all, but they do grow differently. I think they, they grow a little bit differently, particularly species like Montipora. Um, I feel that always seem to get a better result from, um, uh, you know, uh, a better result from T5 and metal halides in the past, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it with uh, LED either. Yeah, these are good. LEDs are great. Yeah. T5s are great, but mm. I find that they both yeah. have benefits, and then when you put them together, yeah. that's when you really can squeeze yes, absolutely. the best of both worlds. Yeah, the best of both worlds. But you guys are just screwed with electricity here. Yeah, see, yeah. I mean, it is pretty extremely I think you are yeah. 10 times more yeah. per kilowatt than yeah, well, what? I think Chris was telling me at ICI that he's paying about 7p a unit, or 7 cents a unit. And you guys are 42? Well, we should be around about 40 of uh, 40 of summer. Some people in the UK are paying as much as 70. Okay, so some people even paying as much as 95 people in the UK. 10 times more yeah, electricity. Yes, yeah. so it is a full thing. Yeah. yeah, that's when LED is really going to shine with the, yeah. with the savings. Yeah. But of course, with the new build next door, things will change. Yeah. So um, we'll have some, some so more content to see. I probably won't have uh, any more T5s next door. Mm. No wholesalers are really stocking them as such. So we, we don't. Yeah. We don't sell them, we don't retail them. I yeah. have some on hand just for my own use and, and yeah. that's it. He's saying that he finds that yeah, this is messy and that there. when he does the new build he wants it to be tidier. And I was saying no. Well, I mean not no, but look how tidy. It is, it's very tidy out of all the places we've been. Everything's laid out nicely, even small attention to detail, like the Ecotech logo there, or making little custom dosing container holders, the Alcatronic. I would say this is very tidy. Time went into hiding all the wires that go to the NP40 quiet drive controllers. The dosing containers, the electrical, look at the plumbing. And he says, oh, it's a mess in here, but when we do the new, the new build, it's going to be tidy. So I can't wait to come back and see what that's going to look like. Because from an outside perspective, for me, this is quite tidy. 
um, especially when I'm thinking back and comparing to some of the oper operations that we've seen. Not saying that any of them out there are not tidy, there's just some that are tidy and then there's tidier and this is definitely on the upper end of that spectrum of tidy. Okay, I think I said tidy enough times. Three times we visited here and we never give any love to fish and you know what, it's as equally as impressive like the selection, even something as simple as this. I never see trimagovies in Canada, but the selection and the overall health, like the way they're quarantined back in the other room and how they're presented here in the front. No dead fish, no fungus, no disease, no ache, no brucanella, no nothing. They look great and they're kept at normal salinity. Look at this. He has them next to a beautiful, not coral banded, this is a which one? That is a ghost cave shrimp. They get huge. That's a baby. That will get to around about six times bigger. Massive. They're massive, yeah. So a lot of the stores back home, they're running their tanks, their fish tanks at 1.018, which is just standard where we are. This obviously is at 1.023 or 24 or 25 yeah, because yeah. you can tell yeah. just from the very fact that he has invertebrates, they would yeah. never survive at a hypo salinity. So it's really yeah. nice to see. They, these are running about 1.023. 23, yeah. which is still reasonable. So slightly you could, lower just so that we can have the higher numbers of fish. You could yeah. take home a fish and if you're being lazy and you don't drip it, you'd expect it to live just throwing it in the, in the tank. Yeah, we, we're trying to advise not to do that. Yeah, <laughs> okay, don't do that, but yeah. if, if yeah. you do, like March does, <laughs> I always say on the channel, do as I say, don't do as I do. Yeah. But really, really nice collection of fish and lots of wrasses, which is one of my personal favorites. Floor to ceiling, check this out. If I had the space, we really don't. And we were just talking about this, why don't we do fish? We do, we do a lot in the coral. We're tight on the space. This, the shop is probably double, double the size of ours. Maybe more actually, when you walk through the back rooms and, and the farm, maybe triple. With the space that we have so you got the new build that's going up over there yeah anything else new that uh, you want to share because it's fairly recent when it you say i think i'm no, coming here too often you know no, i gotta no, wait no. three years yeah i think next door is going to be the big change because uh, that gives us yeah. as i say our online space that won't be public opening Although we might have a few sort of late night evening meets in there, that sort of thing. It'll be cool. But um, it's going to be, as I say, predominantly sort of wholesaling on the seahorses um, and then a brief cassa, brief nutrition, um, but some coral bays that are purely WYSIWYG for online sales as well. You guys can expect to see corals online from AAC. And I think that's it. We're going to wrap it up. Thank you, Paul, very much for taking the time again. And I can't wait back to come back and do an update. And thank you for everyone that came out today to visit. Hi, what's up, buddy? Just in time for the end of the video. And we'll see you guys back here on the next episode of Fragbox TV. Bye for now.